Um, welcome everyone to, I think we're up to number six now in our Farming Together webinar series, Learning Together, uh, Collaborative Business Structures and Models. Um, my name's Amanda, I'm the Program Manager of Farming Together. Uh, tonight, really looking forward to hearing from Alan Beatty and Madeline Anderson, who are sharing their stories from the Noongar Land Enterprise Group as we hear about stories from country indigenous collaborative farming. So without further ado, uh, let me introduce our two fantastic guests tonight. We have Alan Beatty, who is the CEO of the Noongar Land Enterprise Group. And we've got Madeline Anderson, who is uh, a board member of the Land Enterprise Group, but is also the chairperson of the Beemara Aboriginal Corporation. So welcome to you both. I'm not sure who's going first, but Alan, I think it might be you. So um, we'll, uh, we'll hand over to you. Okay, thank you. And thanks, thanks very much for the invitation. And um, good evening to or good, good, uh, good evening to, to most people here in WA. It's still sort of late afternoon, but uh, I'll share my screen and then we'll, um, we'll go from there. Okay, can people see it? Can you see that? Yep, all good. Okay. Um, so first of all, um, I'd like to thank Madeline for, um, for for being on here today. It's been a bit bit last minute for getting Madeline on board. Oral Maguire, our chairperson, was going to be uh, presenting with me, but uh, he's unavailable due to other commitments. And so um, I approached Madeline this morning and she's jumped on board. So thank you, Madeline, much appreciated. Um, okay, what I'll do is I'll just, uh, talk through um, a little bit about who the, what the NLE is, who it is, some of the activities we're doing in, in our business model. Um, and, uh, and Madeline will go over sort of uh, um, who BMO Original Corporation is, the work that they're doing, and uh, how they're working collaboratively, collaboratively with the other organisations as a part of the NLE membership. In, in broad sort of terms, that's sort of what we'll, we'll cover off on. Um, so as I mentioned, Oral Maguire, um, who's a Balladong man from, um, from Beverly, um, is the, the chairperson of, of NLE. Um, Bruce Liu is from the Banjalungup um, people down near uh, Bremer Bay. And, uh, and our other board members are, is Rhys Bonshaw, who's from, from Cranbrook, and, uh, and Madeline, who's from um, Ewa Country in uh, at B Murrah. Um, I commenced as CEO of the Noongar Land Enterprise Group in, in April this year, which was an interesting time to start, it was smack in the middle of COVID. So for the first two months, instead of going out and meeting everyone face to face, it was two months sitting at home doing Zoom meetings like we're doing now and, and getting to, to know people. So it was by the time we actually got around to having our first face to face board meeting six, seven months later, uh, it was pretty much like I sort of knew everyone, but it was certainly an interesting time to start. But it, uh, uh, it's been, I've thoroughly enjoyed the role to date and, uh, and we're, we're starting to kick a few goals, which we'll, we'll talk about. Um, so the Noongar Land Enterprise Group, um, although only formally incorporated in 2017, it was, was uh, uh, being talked about by a number of people, including Bruce and, and Oral um, and another gentleman, Kelly Flugey, back from, in, as early as 2012. And they were talking about how there, there was a, a, a growing number of Aboriginal corporations that were um, acquiring land, either, either through native title or through the Indigenous Land and Sea Corporation or, or otherwise. Um, and how could they work better together to be able to, to um, be more effective in the way that they, what they were doing? And also to get uh, some, some buying power and those sorts of things. So from there, they, they undertook some strategic planning between 2014 and 2017. Um, and in 2017, in, the, the uh, Noongar Land Enterprise Group was formally incorporated through the Associations Act, in, which is a WA legis piece of legislation. Um, and then there was a formal launch of the group in 2018. Um, and then through uh, funding through the Commonwealth, primarily through the Commonwealth and, and, and uh, a small amount of funding through the WA government, um, they were able to advertise and, and get a CEO on board, as I said, and I commenced in, um, in mid, mid this year. Mid this year. Um, so it's been 
a, a relatively sort of long journey, but also a short journey from from a from an NLE perspective. Um, but uh, it's it, when it was it's, it was a, Australia's first Aboriginal grower group, and we're working now with uh, in partnership with with the East West Alliance, which is a formation of, of various Aboriginal groups that are developing similar sorts of cooperative business structures now across uh, across Australia. Um, so certainly NLE is paving the way for, for this type of model for uh, Aboriginal um, farming communities to work together. Currently, um, NLE has, has eight member organisations um, and uh, totalling around about uh, 20,000 hectares. Um, it's, it's very much about um, the whole uh, working in partnership, um, but at the same time is working in partnership is allowing for diversity, particularly um, at the, the, the organisation level. So NLE is, is, is not sort of the parent body of these organisations. Each of the organisations is independent um, and, and runs their own affairs. Um, what we do as NLE is try and work in partnership to um, build cooperative businesses, but also where we can support those those individual organisations to develop their own businesses, then we, we do that to the best extent of our limited resources as well. This gives you an idea in regard to the um, where the various properties are, but also the the, the size of, um, uh, of of the area we're talking about. So. We're talking about uh, Noongar country in the southern, southern um, third of Western Australia, um, with Beemara at the top left-hand corner there, um, up near Dandarigan, the Daniels property, which is near 2J, Yarragawai Enterprises, um, which is uh, near Beverly, Rollins, which is near Bunbury, Darren Farm down near uh, Cranbrook, um, Banjalungup, down near Bremer Bay, and um, and then over at Esperance, there's two organisations over there: Wongatha Caps and the Esperance Jalarak Native Title Aboriginal Corporation. Um, so it's it's certainly spread almost the length and breadth of Noongar country. There's there's not much area that we don't have a property in at the moment. Um, with our membership of eight, um, there's uh, there's this what we anticipate that um, that that number of the number of members will grow as as we can better demonstrate and our um, you know the the benefits of being an NLE member. So certainly there's there's an open invitation there for other other Aboriginal corporations that own land in the southwest of Western Australia to to become NLE members. Um, I won't read through all of the, the, the vision, mission, values, et cetera. People can have, have a read of that on the screen themselves. I, I think the key thing um, for mine is out of that is that there's, is sort of the next slide, which I will talk a little bit more about, but, but is also that there's a lot of thinking gone on, on behind the establishment of NLE. Um, and there's a lot of um, uh, smart people involved in NLE um, that have led to well before I came on board. Um, that have that have you know developed the organisation to the point it's at now, um, and it, it's a very well managed and run organisation at a at a board and at a board governance level. This um, this picture here is is a, a graphical demonstration of of the, our business model. Um, the key thing I'll highlight as a part of a part of this is the the um, the, the centre bit there where it's got NLE in the middle, um, and it's in there if you can read it. It's, it has commercially focused, culturally appropriate, and that's very much the mantra of NLE as an organisation. Is we are looking to develop um, um, commercially sustainable, commercially focused um, uh, enterprises that that do turn a profit. Um, but at the same time, they, they, none of those will be developed where, where there's a, a consideration that's, uh, that it's not culturally appropriate. Um, and so we'll talk about some of those activities and initiatives we're working through shortly. Um, but certainly that's, that's the key driver of NLE is the commercially focused, culturally appropriate. So looking at this business model on the, from the left hand side, we have the, on the far left, the eight Aboriginal corporations that are 
um, that are members of NLE at the moment. Uh, the next circle there is is titled information and planning and, it, and it's really about a lot of the, those sorts of things that need to go into organizing or running a corporation but also running activities and enterprises as, as a part of that whole thing so the things like financial planning tools and equipment training uh, infrastructure needs all of those various sorts of things moving across to the middle which i've sort of spoken about uh, to some degree the culturally focused and commercially appropriate but along with that is, is very, very strong ethics and governance. Um, and, uh, and, and there's also, you know, is what, well, what are those deliverables going to be? What assets do we need and infrastructure associated with it? The next uh, sort of moving across to the right is, is some of the activities or the activities that we're currently developing, such as the honey, um, bush foods, and a range of other activities agritourism etc and that that list will grow as we develop the various business initiatives that we are developing and then finally on the on the right hand side is a is um we have profitable nle landholders so very much we're not just focused on nle as an organization being a profitable organization but we want all of our land landholders to be profitable and and, and gaining commercial return as a part of this as a part of them being an NLE, nle member as well and finally, down the bottom, um, there's certainly a recognition by all the NLE members and NLE as an organisation that, um, um, like most of us in, in life, we, we can't do everything alone and that we do, we, we do need staff and we do need supporters and collaborative partners. And so they, they're a range of, of pa those partners are a range of, of organisations from, from government at uh, all levels, state, um, commonwealth and local through to uh, other private sector organisations, other grower groups that we we now working with, um, the private sector, the philanthropic sector, a whole range of, of people as a part of that, that uh, process in developing those partnerships. But I think key to that is, it's very specific that the boomerang there is at the bottom of the, the diagram rather than the top. So it's very much saying that uh, there's a full recognition that yes, we need those partners and we need to be working with them. Um, but there's a very strong message in that model that the, the people driving this other Nunga people themselves, not the partners and not government, et cetera, not anyone else. It's, it's the individual corporations and Nunga people themselves that are, that are driving where they're heading with their various properties and driving NLE as an organisation. You're probably sick of my voice by now, so it's time to hand over to Madeline and uh, Madeline can tell us a little bit about uh, BMAR. No worries. Thanks, Alan. Um, and thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I had to shuffle a few things around there. Well, kids being home from school now, so I had to give them the instructions before the meeting started and you sent it to be quiet. So hopefully I'll have no interruptions. But um, yeah. So I'll introduce myself. Um, I'm a Dunga Yud um, Yoga from um, Dandarigan. I have strong connections to both the Mora community, Dandarigan community, as well as the country itself. Um, my ancestors are from this area and have travelled uh, and lived um, in Dandarigan, Mora and in Orsia, right out to the coast as far as Durian, um, and travelled um, according to the six seasons. Um, so there's a quite uh, well established here um, in Dandarigan. Uh, my family, being my grandmother and her sister, um, applied for the land package back in the early 1990s um, and were offered the opportunity to access a um, piece of land in Dandarigan. So that's um, the conversation started between my grandmother and her sister and her um, sister's husband around what can they do on the place. And uh, Pop Kevin, who you see in the photo there, he's been here from the beginning. Um, I refer to him as my grandfather. So I've got many grandfathers and he's one of the most important grandfathers in my life. Um, he comes from a very big family with connections from as far as Kew uh, and right across to uh, Lake Grace. Um, 
and I've known Pop Kevin since I was born. I was raised by my grandparents, so um, I can't tell lies. And Pop Kevin knows everything about what I've done and where I've been. So our relationship is um, very important in terms of how we foresee you know, the operations of BMR and the relationships with the community. So to give you some background, um, in the first 10 years, uh, Pop Kevin, his wife and um, his, their children have been operating um, a goat farm here and had trial and error and what they need to prioritise. And there was a lot of work put into infrastructure and um, setting up governance and uh, yeah, so there was a lot of um, a lot of learnings, and the board at that time was made up of all the elders in our family. So you can imagine there was a lot of gaps in um, in learning and understanding and uh, on how to operate a business itself. So moving uh, fifteen years uh, forward, um, BMR had a conversation with. Uh, Mark from the Perd and um, just to have a yarn about what other what else can we do here and what support have we got that's available to us so at that time a lot of us um, the, the second generation from Pop Kevin were just coming out of um, finishing school or had finished a, a diploma or some form of qualification so we started to, you know, well, the elders engaged with it, with us, uh, with our generation and started to have the conversation about what are the next steps, what else can we do? So this is where um, in 2015, BMR decided to take that uh, uh, leap of faith, I suppose. I mean, Pop Kevin's, um, his background is, you know, a stockman and, um, working out on the station. So a lot of us relied on Pop Kevin's knowledge and um, and I suppose he would rely on us and the skills and knowledge we have and, and um, especially around bookkeeping. So there was a lot of work put into uh, this new operation, which is a backgrounding operation that we um, have here. So uh, backgrounding uh, cattle is, is We've got a small um, operation here. Our property is around 1,200 hectares and we have established uh, just a little over 500 hectares of perennials. So the backgrounding operation is uh, basically set up around a rotational grazing system. Uh, five years uh, prior to the uh, backgrounding, uh, uh, we had cattle on the property on adjustment, on adjustment. So there was no control on how we managed the land and how we took care of it. And um, so with the support of DPIRD, we've accessed a number of training around animal husbandry, um, the backgrounding model itself. And um, for our, the, the members that were living on the property were able to um, engage in conversations not only with our clients but also with the wider community and um, and it, it just it was it was always a short conversation. Um, so our operation we've we're five years in and doing really well um, and have been able to manage that um, within our capacity and our control and how we want to talk about our operation and how we want to engage with community and how we're going to take care of the land itself whilst we're managing our, you know, the cattle resources. So with uh, the new generation um, coming back home, one of them being myself and Pop Kevin's other two grandchildren, um, and also our cattle manager, which is Lexi Morinvine, um, we we are keen and we are we are ready to get out into the community and to start talking about who we are and what we do. Um, it has been really tough in the past two years trying to do that and not really having so much connections um, to other farmers or being able to access other. Um, 
grower groups um, and the conversation with uh, Deep Herd um, was a turning point for us, which was last year in, uh, it was mid last year and um, he was talking about uh, NLE um, and what, what they do. So we uh, jumped on board fairly quickly on the ground that um, NLE, uh, so at our first, we became members in October last year and the opportunity for us was to, one, increase networks um, within the Noongar Buja and to be supported by other Noongar um, business enterprises. Because uh, we had um, tried numerous times trying to work with our local community and it, and it is changing, it, it's, it's changing. We, we've been in articles now, so they, they can't, they weren't going to get away from us. And that again is with the support from Adelie and assisting us in our marketing strategies. Um, we've also been able to develop the confidence in accessing or uh, participating in other, they're, they're kind of set up like grower groups, but they're just uh, much smaller around rotational grazing and land care management. And um, yeah, so NLE has is, is been a great opportunity, um, has, has given us that opportunity to be able to um, network in, and in a way where we can have uh, the, the same conversation without feeling like that we're excluded and you know, it's, this is acknowledging Noongar country and acknowledging our resources and connecting that back to who we are and how we are trying to, you know, not only repair the land, but also, you know, help look after our people and, you know, look at opportunities around employment and um, really caring for country. So that's, um, that's, I've probably jammed it all in one little conversation there, but um, that's pretty much all in a nutshell. Um, yeah. It's, it's, Got any questions? I'll be happy to answer. Thanks, Madeline. Um, I'll just go through a few few other slides. We've got about five minutes less left, and and sort of talk a little bit about some of the the NLE activities, and then then I think we're moving on to question and answer. Is that the way that's happening, Simone? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, okay. that'll yep. that'd be great. No, no doubt there'll be lots of questions coming too. So, yeah, great. Thanks, Alan. Okay, so um, I mean, what we see is the, the, the NLE saw as a group coming together, as a grower group coming together, um, was a range of things, and these are only just touching on some of them, but um, one, it was a, a single point for stakeholders to be able to come to. So if, if there's, there's people that are uh, wanting to engage, whether it's government or, or non-government organisations, then it makes it easier for them to engage with NLE, and then NLE can engage with its members. Um, one of the key things is, is scalability. Um, so is if we're all producing one sort of good that's, uh, or, or a number of people producing one sort of good that's of, of a relatively small scale or so small quantity, then we're able to, to build that together and get that scalability and, and then become more marketable, um, which then leads on to the whole marketing side of things. Um, one of the key things that NLE is, is, is trying to be able to do is allow the grower group or allow the individual landowners to, to do what they're good at and that's growing the, the goods and producing the, the produce, et cetera. And, and then we undertake the marketing and, and develop the markets for people, et cetera, in relation to that so that they can focus in on, on actually doing the business and growing the, the produce. And one of the, the uh, key things out of this as well, I think is, is as Madeline said, is, is giving people a voice um, and that's in a whole range of ways. One is coming together at our NLE members meetings so that people can share stories and, and, um, and, and that sort of thing between themselves, but is also giving them a, a broader voice within the farming community um, and within um, you know, a whole range of various communities that we all participate in. Um, but by having that collective, collective voice, we have a much stronger voice and a, and a voice that is hopefully starting to be listened to. Um, some of the other parts, so that's sort of, look, this one's more looking at from a, a cultural sort of perspective in relation to or what are the benefits from the NLE members um, being a part of NLE from a cultural perspective. And very much it's, it's around that, I mean, caring for country and connection to country and Mother Earth is, is fundamental to Aboriginal culture full stop and, and, uh, and the Noongar uh, people particularly. Um, 
And so a key element of, of accessing and gaining the land and, and, and caring for country is around that whole culture of re rejuvenation. And very much there's that connection between the, the mind and the body and the land from an Aboriginal perspective. And so that, that's not only uh, in, in healing, are we healing country in these various properties, but through the healing of country, we're healing the individuals that are associated with it. And at the same time, um, where people wish to participate, the broader community is providing an opportunity for the broader community, both Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal, to benefit from that uh, spiritual connection to the land and the healing that that, it's self-healing that that can bring. Um, and then associated with that, there's, there's the storytelling and a whole range of other sorts of things from that cultural expression point of view. And, you know, we, we uh, recognise that we're all living in, in the 21st century and so that, you know, things like employment and job opportunities and those sorts of things is, is critical um, to everyone, in, including the Noongar community. Um, from a partner's point of view, as I've said, we, we recognise that there's a, there's a need for us to partner with a whole range of people and, um, and for a whole range of reasons, which I won't go into detail on, so I want to sort of move on to, to some of the uh, activities. So one of the, one of the activities we're developing is, is a honey project, um, so a beekeeping honey project. Uh, we've, we've branded that, that honey, called, it's called nooka, which is the, the Baladon word, word for honey. Um, and we did a, a small non-commercial pour towards the end of last year uh, and have done another one just recently. Um, and we're anticipating and hoping that we'll get to the point where we'll actually have it commercially available in some way, shape or form, whether it's as a raw honey or in some other form of product associated with that by, by around about, about mid next year, mid 2021. Um, it's it's a, one of those things that, that certainly um, uh, being a beekeeper or an apiarist isn't for everyone, but it's, it's part of this, uh, part of the, the NLE's role in this has to provide, been to provide the opportunity for all eight NLE members to participate in the training and, and, and uh, have hives and those sorts of things. And really it's then up to the individual corporations to the extent they wish, wish to or do not wish to get involved. And, and that, that will then determine, you know, the, 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 the the amount of honey we produce and, and where we go to with this business initiative. Um, one of the others that we're, we're uh, there's a couple of photos there of, of the, the, um, the beekeeper training, uh, which is being undertaken by Mel Clifford, who's an Aboriginal, ap ap Aboriginal apiarist who's been an apiarist for the last 30 to 40 years. So Mel's been doing a great job there. Um, one of the other things we're developing is, is a range of um, bush food initiatives. Um, but the primary one to start with is uh, the wattle, is wattle seed produced from the acacia, various acacia species. Um, there was a, a small harvest done last year at, at a, a, um, um, on some of the properties. And this year, over the last uh, few days, last week, we've been doing a, a, a quite a major wattle seed harvest at two, two properties. One up near uh, Madeline's country, and another one at uh, near Beverly uh, that's currently being undertaken. Um, and so this is certainly something that that we see as a, a major uh, business business initiative, both the the wattle seed as as, in, as as a single element itself, but is also the development of of the uh, uh, and and a greater participation in in the bush foods industry. Um, unfortunately, out of the tw roughly twenty five million um, commercial value of bush foods annually within Australia. The estimate is that approximately 1% of that is currently produced by Aboriginal people. And so we're, we're certainly um, determined to, to change that at a, at a WA level and become a major player in the provision of, the, of bush foods to the, um, particularly the food, and food industry, um, but also uh, in a, in a, into um, uh, your shops that you locally go to and those sorts of things where there's bush foods available. Uh, we hope to, within a very short period of time, have uh, a large proportion of that badged with uh, NLE as a part of it, so that there's a, a, a certainly a strong market potential there. Um, and this is the, the last one, and I'd say the, the, the most exciting one that, that we've certainly been working on for the last six months, or probably actually it's occurred in the last three months, is um, as of uh, officially today, um, we become the owners of a, a tree nursery out near uh, near Northam, 
um, that settles to settle today. We actually acquired it through a, um, um, a license arrangement around about a month ago so that we could actually start planting. Um, and so that's that's a, a major initiative, major step forward for NLE from a number of reasons. One, um, it'll provide NLE with a, 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 a profitable business that can contribute back to uh, the operations of NLE um, itself. Uh, but also it provides NLE with as an organisation with a, um, a land holding, not huge, but a land holding that um, then we can utilise for access to equity and those sorts of things moving forward. And, and, um, and more importantly, I think, and then either of those two is the employment that we can provide local people. Um, we've had 10 to 15 people um, engaged from day one, uh, local Aboriginal people engaged from day one since we since we um, acquired the property. Um, quite amazingly, we've been able to, in the space of uh, a few weeks, um, uh, gain orders of approximately 1.5 million seedlings um, to be planted. So we're furiously trying to get that done. We're up to around about uh, 400,000 seedlings um, planted over the last three weeks. Um, and I think broader than that, again, is, is this whole, it very much fits into NLE's business model of um, um, commercially sustainable, culturally appropriate, uh, in that these the the seedlings that that come out will not only be utilised by by our own um, NLE members to to rejuvenate their own properties, um, but the vast majority of it will be actually used by the broader community, whether that's um, um, government or non-government organisations, farmers, etc., to be able to to care for country. And, uh, and rejuvenate the land, which very much fits in with our whole philosophy. Um, so I think the, the acquisition of the tree nursery is a perfect fit for our business model um, and is a key step in NLE moving forward as an organisation into the future. So I'll finish on that one and um, yeah, any, any questions and uh, I'll move out of this um, slide deck. Thank you very much. Um, very, yeah, wonderful to hear your story in, in so much more detail than I was aware of previously and, and as well, Madeline, to hear about your experiences being part of the cooperative as well. Um, if anyone does have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat and um, we can invite you to, to turn on your mic then as well. I've, I've got a question as well waiting, Madeline, and forgive me for not knowing what this is and possibly I should, but um, back, backgrounding, you called it, I think. Yeah, so sorry, I, should, I probably should have explained that, but backgrounding is basically we receive, we don't own the cattle. Uh, the cattle come down from pastoral stations or even um, from uh, cattle in the wheat belt. Um, so they come to our property, um, it's all on a weight gain um, model, so it's, a, it's, it's basically a profit sharing um, business where they come onto our property, we, in a nutshell, we fatten them up and then we send them off to either to the abattoir or to the live market, it oh, depends on what the client specifications are. Fantastic, so as you were saying before, unlike a gisting, doing it this way, you actually have a lot more control in decision making about how you manage your land. And I guess you get to share in the good work that both partners do in bringing the cattle and fattening them up. Absolutely, so using their rotational grazing system, it's, it's been a huge advantage in, in how we manage our, our pastures here and um, we, we now, we, we have a higher um, income of cattle, um, high income of cattle, higher number of cattle coming through the property and we've seen a huge increase in our profits over the past three years and that, that's the greatest thing we've, um, we've achieved in, uh, in the life of Bermara, so it's, it's really good. And, and it, it sounds like you've just had such a, a radical learning opportunity along the way in the time that you've been involved. I've really enjoyed listening to, to the stories about the things that you've learned along the way. Um, sounds like, yeah, you've had some rapid, rapid learning opportunities and experiences. Absolutely. We've, uh, so there's Pop Kevin still living on the property, myself and my, my family. 
and our cattle manager, Lexi, um, who's also brought a, a array of skills um, and knowledge to the corporation as well. So yeah, we're, we're, we're really happy with how we're progressing. And um, one of the other, um, we're, we're actually looking at um, a new enterprise and that's around Aboriginal astronomy. Um, so yeah, we'll look at focus. We're looking at um, engaging with young people from the um, communities and um, finding a, you know more creative ways to get people, young fellas, out on country. How brilliant! Mm. Yeah, that's fantastic. I've got um I've got a question from Dana Kelly in the chat. There, you mentioned backgrounding wattle seed and a tree nursery. What other agricultural enterprises are there in NLE? Might be one for you, Alan. Yeah. Um, so if you look through the, vari the various properties we have, some of them are, are more engaged in traditional sort of well, Western farming um, style enterprises than, than others. Um, Madeline, as, a, as, a, as mentioned, is, is doing the cattle backgrounding. Um, one of the other properties, Dowrien Farm down at Cranbrook, they're doing, um, they're, they're doing prime lamb production. Um, the BMAR Aboriginal Corporation over at uh, um, Bremer Bay, uh, all going well, going to be starting prime land production um, in the next 12 months. Um, other properties such as the, the property that at, at, um, near Beverly, um, Oral there is focused in on very much on, on trying to rejuvenate the land rather than focusing on, on a more sort of Western style um, agricultural business or operation. So they've planted over half a million Species, native species onto their onto their property since they they over the last ten years and have their their goal is to plant another half a million over the next five years, um, but that in itself is is a is a is a a form of income generation off the land, um, as it's like where we the last like yesterday today and tomorrow is is where we're doing the 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 wattle seed collection at, at that particular property. So although it's not you know necessarily seen as probably one of those traditional Western style um, uh, land-based commercial activities, um, we're very much as well as looking at those from an NLE perspective, looking at how we can actually utilise the land in a way that generates an income, but is probably a little bit uh, more more um, gentler on the earth as well. Oh, amazing. Um, Dana, Dana was also keen to know how many cattle enterprises there are amongst the properties. The only the only one at the moment is is um, Now there's a you know we're on on Noongar country, which is um, obviously not where your your station country is and those sorts of things. Now there's a whole range of uh, Aboriginal owned stations in the Pilbara and the Kimberley, um, but you know they they we don't uh, they're not a part of the NLE network as they're not on not on Noongar country. Hmm. Um, Douglas has said that NLE sounds amazing. Has there been any look or interest in platform cooperatives or multi-sided multi -sided marketplaces, etc.? cetera? Um, I think, you know, that, that one, of the, one of the things we, we as I said, we've, we've got an association going with the, um, um, with the Outback Academy, which is based in New South Wales, and, and we're develop, developing this East-West Alliance, which is then working through with a range of Aboriginal corporations that are looking to form similar cooperatives in South Australia, Victoria, New South Wales, and, and now getting generating some interest in Queensland. Um, so I think there's there's opportunity, and we and part of those discussions with the East-West Alliance is, is how do those uh, cooperatives work together individually but also then how do we work together as an overall cooperative right across Australia from that point of view in relation to to looking at, at again scalability marketing and those sorts of things um, so I'm not quite sure whether that's what, what Douglas was was sort of getting at but certainly there's I think there's a range of opportunities there but it, it's um, it's early days and uh, I mean NLE has been going three years but I'm, I'm their first full-time employee in the last six months so it's it's uh, it's a work in progress, that's for sure. Mm. Um, Douglas added, uh, he said, yes, it is. And he also asked if you're familiar with, um, it's an acronym, I'm assuming, NAAKPA, NACPA. And if so, can you speak to any similarities or differences? Can't say I'm aware of that one. Um, uh, did you want to get on the mic, Douglas? 
Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yes. <clears throat> um, yeah, thank you. Uh, sorry, I just, uh, yeah, just throwing uh, random uh, acronyms out there. But NACPA stands for uh, Northern Australia Aboriginal Kakadu Plum Alliance. And they're basically a collective of wild harvesters on the top end who um, basically aggregate um, the harvest, which is, you know, being done by women, women's work there and, and you know, bringing that, that, uh, that harvest to, to market uh, domestically and internationally. And they have some support by, from ILSC. Um, and so I was just curious if, whether or not, um, you know, ILSC is being su you know, supportive of, of this initiative um, in, in the same or similar context? Yeah, certainly. I mean, we, we work uh, all of the, you know, the various corporations work uh, individually with the ILSC, but the ILSC also um, have been a supporter of, um, of, NL, of NLE uh, in various ways, shapes and forms. Um, we're currently in discussions with them about um, uh, getting some upgraded equipment and those sorts of things for the tree nursery. Um, so there's a, there's a range of supports there. I think from, a, from our perspective, sort of the, the two key support organisations to date from an NLE perspective from a government side of things have been ILSC at the uh, Commonwealth level and then DP, the Department of Planning and Indus uh, Industry and Resource Development to, at a WA level um, have, been, have been very strong supporters of NLE as well. Great, thank you. Thanks, Douglas. I've got a question from Michelle. Uh, it's a great model for sharing skills, resources, value adding, marketing, etc. Is there any sharing of land and water? Um, I'm not not quite sure what's meant by the by the sharing of land and water. Um, I mean, we we we're primarily focused on land based enterprises from the point of view of that's where the majority of the properties are. But some of the properties are also um, adjoining. Um, the oceans, particularly down at Bremer Bay and, and Esperance. And so that may be well something that we, we look at developing business initiatives in those areas as time moves on. Um, but at the moment, we've got plenty, plenty of land-based activities that are keeping us uh, well and truly busy at this particular point. Um, so that's probably the best answer I can give to that one. Yeah, did you want to elaborate at all, Michelle? No, that's fine. I just, I guess in Indigenous societies, um, property ownership was completely different paradigm. Um, so I'm just wondering how modern collaborative farming marries the traditional approach to sharing land. Yeah, and I think that's, that's one, that is certainly key to, um, you know, the NLE model is um, that, and, and is that is that whole notion of the collective approach in relation to it? So it's sharing the benefits of the land across the various people, etc., and bringing that under one umbrella, so we can get from from both a sharing perspective, but also from a commercial commercially sustainable perspective. Um, and I think in a in a in a WA Southwest Noongar perspective as well, it's it's going to to change over the next few years with the um, the High Court making its native title decision in the last week, week or so around, um, you know, the the finalisation of the of the settlement between the WA government and the Noongar people in relation to to the to their land claim to the land claim, etc. That that's going to have um, uh, a range of sort of uh, impacts on potentially on NLE and how it operates and what it does, etc. Moving forward, um, but that that will sort of come out over time and certainly I think a large part of that is, is about how the as you said the sharing of, of the land and, and where it is um, you know water is involved and then similar arrangement. Thanks for your thoughts Alan. Thanks Michelle. Um, we've got Alexandra's, Ale, Alexander sorry he's got a, a question. Why did you choose a cooperative structure rather than another legal structure? I think the um, the cooperative model seemed to to fit with with um, what people were trying to achieve from the, from the point of view of the information sharing and a whole range of other sorts of things. One of the things that we are discussing as a as a collective as NLE members and particularly at the book the board level is around that um, uh, the, the the cooperative model um, 
as a not-for-profit organisation um, may not be appropriate for everything we do. So it may well be that, that we end up with a, a range of structures and a range of business models that suit the needs of whatever that particular business initiative is. Um, and so that I don't necessarily see that, uh, and the board doesn't necessarily see that that will be the, um, um, the only structure, but it, it seems to be an effective structure for what was the, the purpose of bringing in NLE and the formation of NLE and bringing the, the NLE organisations together to, to begin with. Mm. Great, thanks, Alan. Um, Anne Jennings has just uh, put a note in there that that NAPPA is what um, Pat Torres is involved in in Broome. Yeah. Um, and Paul's got a question. Are you able to talk about whether NLE supports young people with apprenticeships, traineeships and further education? It's certainly something that we want to do. Um, at this point, we haven't been, you know, we haven't been able to directly um, do that from the point of view of, of um, you know, it, it's, it's early days as an organisation. Um, but certainly that's, I think, at both the individual corporation level um, and at the uh, at the broader NLE level, there's there's a desire to do so. Um, some of the NLE member organisations, such as the Jolly Rap organisation down at um, es uh, down at Esperance, they've got an Aboriginal Ranger program, and some of those people are certainly going through traineeships and those sorts of things as, as a part of that that Ranger program. Um, one of the things we would like to do as a part of the uh, the nursery and associated with that, the, the bush food side of things we, we're looking to develop um, is to be able to provide opportunities for whether they be apprenticeships or traineeships as, as a part of that process as well. Um, so it's certainly a strong desire we have as an organisation, but it's something that um, we just haven't had the, the, uh, the, the, the financial capacity to be able to develop those sorts of initiatives as, as yet. Hmm. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, I've got another one from Douglas. Will NLE be making NLE branded value added bush food products or more focused on selling produce to consumers and food businesses? Um, very much, well both, but very much where, look, whether that whether that's the um, the bush food side of things or like with the honey, with our own branding, with the NLE branding, with Nooka, the Nooka honey, etc. Um, we'll certainly be, we'll be looking to, um, uh, to, to one, have our own brand in relation to that, but also to have, um, add, add value to, to various products and those sorts of things as well. So, where, which is one of one of the things we're looking at at the moment. I'm, I'm not going to give too much detail away because, <laughs> um, but we're looking at ways in which we can utilise the wattle seed and bush foods and those sorts of things for a whole range of additives to other products um, that you know contribute to that downstream processing side of things. It gives us a range of options in regards to products, but also, um, um, and 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 as we do that, we would either be developing those ourselves as an NLE brand, or where we're working with others, it'd be co-branded with NLE as, as one of the, um, uh, you know, key producers of that particular product. Great, cool. <laughs> um, I had a question around that, actually, if I might. Um, you said only 1% of bush foods uh, currently sold are, are from Indigenous, People, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. And you said you're going to um, NLE would become an own, its own brand for consumers, like I guess to offer a bit more transparency in what's actually going on. Um, is there any kind of certification process or anything? I know, um, you know, over time we've started to see more and more on food labels, so the consumers really have a choice and really informed in what they're buying. You know, you think about organic food, but there has been no transparency, uh, I've, uh, as far as I'm concerned, around this. So I was just curious if there's any anything else aside from the NLE brand that is going to facilitate greater transparency for consumers. Um, well, I would certainly hope so over time. And, and I think one of the other key, key things from, well, a whole range of various sorts of things related to Indigenous produce, but in particular, say, the bush foods, is, is the intellectual property that goes with that. And so we're, we're very conscious of that in relation to this as well. 
Um, and there's been a lot of exploitation of Aboriginal knowledge um, over over time with by by um, uh, the the a range of areas, but particularly pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals, those sorts of areas, etc. And taking that Indigenous IP and intellectual knowledge and then turning into a product with very little to no benefit coming back to Aboriginal those Aboriginal people. Um, just on that one, from a, broadly from an Australian perspective, is um, uh, Australia um, has signed but not ratified um, the, its, its participation in a Nagoya Protocol, which is an international protocol around recognising as a part of it ind Indigenous rights and IP and those sorts of things. Um, and so because of the, the Commonwealth's lack of desire to, to do that, it, it leaves Australia and, and, its, and its Aboriginal people in a really vulnerable position in comparison to other countries such as Canada and New Zealand with, the, with their Indigenous people, where they, through their, through their organisations, through their country signing up to the Nagoya Protocol and then developing further legislation at, at a national level, um, they're, they're, the the implications for not doing things like benefit sharing agreements and that sort of stuff is is quite substantial on corporations if they if they and organisations if they don't do that. Whereas in Western Australia, I mean, and in Australia where Aboriginal people are very vulnerable from that from that exploitation, and unfortunately from a WA perspective, we've got the weakest legislation in Australia. So. That's where, you know, from developing this side of things, um, we're doing it in a very cautious way and ensuring that we don't um, accidentally devolve in, divulge any uh, IP knowledge as a part of that process. Mm. Yeah, that's great. And I noticed Douglas just put a few um, articles in the chat there too, if anyone's interested. Um, Kevin's just added, the Australian Native Foods and Botanicals Board is very sensitive to the need for Indigenous ITP to be recognised and supportive of Indigenous businesses to create wealth from their traditional knowledge and products. Um, yeah, and, and Dana just stated the same thing there as well. Yeah, there's also another organisation um, that's been recently established um, in, in relation to the bush foods industry, which is wholly Aboriginal. The, the board is, is, is wholly Aboriginal, whereas ANFAB, a lot of the board are non-Indigenous non, non and it's been primarily driven by non-Indigenous um, people in the past. There's, there's a greater sort of Indigenous participation in it now, but ANFAB um, uh, hasn't, it, it is, is, is not necessarily... Um, or certainly not all Aboriginal um, uh, uh, board members, etc. Whereas there has been a new organisation established that um, uh, that is 100% uh, Aboriginal um, controlled, etc. At that national level. Yeah. Oh, great! Thanks, Alan. That's that's really interesting. Um, I, do you have another one? Look, I've actually got a whole list of questions that I just don't have time to ask tonight. So maybe we might have to do this again some other time um, soon. I am mindful of the time. Uh, so we might, might wrap it up. I'll save my questions for later. Uh, but I've just found this a really fantastic um, opportunity to listen to your stories. And I know, Alan, we've met before briefly that it was really nice to hear more. Hear more. And Madeline just loved hearing your story. Thanks so much for coming um, in last minute. Uh, it was fantastic. I think for me particularly, obviously at Farming Together, for us, we really um, centre everything we do around the importance of, of relationships and the idea that what we do in business is good for people, um, good for land and good for business. So uh, I really uh, enjoyed re feeling that, that resonated with the business model that you presented tonight as well and the way um, the NLE group approaches everything they do. Another thing that I really loved about the model that you um, presented was the idea that it's, um, that farmers have, the independence in their own and they're empowered to make decisions in their own business but as a part of a collective they also have an in, in like interdependence on each other as well that by working together they can enhance the value or the benefits um, and share them as a group so I really appreciated seeing that in the model um, as well. Mm. I'm not sure if you have anything I've got to a add. sense yeah. of that especially when you were sharing Madeline I loved hearing your story because I know there can be a lot of barriers to 
you know, becoming involved in a cooperative and, um, you know, I'd be fascinated to hear more about your story at some point, just in terms of, you know, getting involved and, and what that meant for you and some of those barriers maybe that you had to overcome. But it was wonderful to hear about the benefits that you've been experiencing so far since, um, since last year. So, yeah. And I was actually just going to add to that and say we'd actually love the opportunity to share both your stories through our Farming Together readership. So if you'd, if you'd love to have uh, your story shared with a whole lot of farmers across the country, we'd, um, we'd love to have that opportunity to share it. And also if anyone who's listening tonight would like to get in touch with either Alan or Madeline uh, and they don't have your contact details, we'd be happy to uh, make that connection for you. And I noticed, Madeline, that you made a call out to just to be connected with more farmers that are doing interesting things in your space. We'd also be really happy to connect you with some people that we know that we think um, uh, are doing some amazing things in your region as well. You probably already know them, but uh, we love bringing good people together at Farming Together. So um, thanks to you both so much for such a fascinating night. Um, for any, for any lots of thanks going on in the chat too. Oh, they, yeah, had a look. That? Yeah. oh yes. Brilliant initiative. Thank you both for sharing. Applause, applause. Um, thanks so much to both Madeline and Alan. Thanks for using this platform to promote the important work you're doing to a potentially very wide audience. So a huge thank you to you both and the work you're doing. It's brilliant. Yeah, and look, from an NLE perspective, I think that's one of the things we recognise as an organisation as well, is that yeah, we we're there to obviously our key key beneficiaries need to be our members. But broader than that is, is you know, the whole um, uh, exposing people to the fact that there actually are Aboriginal corporations out there that are operating enterprises and those sorts of things, uh, land-based enterprises. But also I think is, is that whole um, bringing people together um, from an Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal perspective um, and, and that information sharing and, and knowledge and, and, and building one nation. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, we hear you. And so in case anyone's loved this webinar so much that they want to listen to it again, um, we're going to have the recording available on our website and we'll email that out as well to everyone. Um, but please, yeah, also send us through any questions or if you want to get in touch. Um, so thanks again to you both, um, at Alan and Madeline, uh, and look forward to staying in touch and keeping up to date. And um, I think I think now I might briefly just mention our next week's webinar, uh, which is our final in the series of seven, which is talking about your generation, planning for success in succession. So we know succession planning is a really important topic in, in agriculture today. And we've got some great guest speakers who are talking about their different approaches um, quite innovative pro approaches to being able to stay on the farm and retire at the same time. So we really look forward to bringing you that one next week. I think that's pretty much it for us for the night. So thanks again for joining us, everyone. Thanks for the great questions tonight and to our fantastic guests. We really appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, Alan. Thanks, Madeline. Thank you, everyone. Good, good night or good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs>